Yo, what is up, everybody? Back again. Y'all already know hey, what Nail, it is. play that shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. This man got the background. You already know, man. Easy money. Easy money. Well, it, it should be easy money, but like I said, I wood. I got wood. <laughs> Look at the looks of the graphics. We got Dean and we got Dave. It doesn't get better than that shit. Yeah, put that shit on. Put that shit on. As Richard Bobby said, if you ain't first, you're last. Exactly. Second place is that two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah.
with everybody, if, you know, if we're going to keep it a buck. We haven't seen Aaron Rodgers play good football in three years. His last MVP season was 2021. And then 22, a lot of people forget, but going into the last game of the season at home versus Detroit, when you're in the playoffs, Aaron Rodgers flopped. I think he had two or three interceptions that game, and they were bad interceptions. Didn't throw a, He hasn't thrown a, a game. He hasn't thrown 300, over 300 yards in a game in the last three years. So, like, then fast forward, they, you know, gets traded to New York last year. Tears his Achilles four plays in. Now he's 41 years old. I'm not saying he's still not, you know, a top 15, top 12, top eight quarterback, arguably. But what do you think we're getting from Aaron Rodgers here? And what do what do the Jets have to get? Because, I mean, they, in one sense, you could say, like, well, you see how good they were with Zach Wilson and they were still able to win games. But at the same time, if you look at some of the games they won, most of them were versus backup or bad quarterbacks, the games they were able to win. Because me personally, I don't think Robert Sala is a good head coach. I think he's a great defensive mind, but you had Zach Wilson for years before the Aaron Rodgers experiment last year. You let Aaron Rodgers come in, walk in, walk all over y'all, tell you you're getting this person, you're getting Nathaniel Hackett, who had just got fired six games into his head coaching tenure. You get Randall Cobb, who damn near in a nursery home. You get Alan Lazard. You do everything for Aaron Rodgers with no backup contingency plan. And then what what do you know? He tears his Achilles, and now you're back at square one with no real, you know, team, and you miss the playoffs once again. That's just that's poor coaching. So I don't believe in Robert Sala, but this year you get Aaron Rodgers back. Hopefully he stays healthy. How how do the Jets perform? Because they got name power. Like you look at the roster on, on paper, it looked pretty good. But as we know, in the NFL, it's eleven players gotta be one on all three phases of the ball. That can, a lot of times on paper, team don't actually produce when it comes to the actual games. So how you, how you think you're, you're bad, man? How is he going to do this year? How are you going to lead the Jets? It's the same thing with the Browns. There is just teams that you just know, like the Jets. The, the Jets, the Jets are going to jet. They're, 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 they're going to, they're, they're they're going to jet, bro. They're going to jet. Um, look, me personally, I think Robert Sala is probably one of the worst head coaches in the league right now. Um, I think he gets fired after this year. Um, like you say, Aaron Rodgers is getting old. Um, this receiving core is amazing. I can't even lie. The receiving core is pretty good. The offense is pretty good. They went out and and got um offensive linemen for him. Um, the defense is still pretty good. But it's just something, like I said, it's just something just like the Brown. It's just something about like certain franchises, they just just don't win. Like they just don't do nothing. And I think the Jets is one of them. I think the Browns is another one, one of them. They're just both of them just um a disaster of um organization. And um I don't know. Something's gonna happen to where you just like, okay, that's the Jets, that's the Jets I know. So um, yeah, nah. <laughs> I think they'll probably finish third in this, in this division. Third, hey, yeah. Yeah. that's okay. second. And, and, and this, is, and no, I can see, I, I can see it. That's the thing. Yeah. Now I was gonna say, I will say, I think this division is, is probably the second, the second best in the NFL. Also, I mean, it's a pretty tough division too. Even with the Patriots in there, because I think the Patriots, yeah. like no Patriots offense, I, I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for uh, Mayo to be a good yeah. coach. But they, I mean, he's put in one of the toughest positions ever. I yeah. think the Patriots are going to be absolute dog shit. I'm not even going to hold you. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're <laughs> like, going to be damn ass. I say they, they, I Drake say. may I not looking good in practice. Jacoby Brissett will be a serviceable game manager, but I don't know how many games that's going to win you. I say that that division. they're going to just going to be second when healthy. That's 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 why I said when healthy. Because like I said, they got the worst field. I'm still going to stand by that. Like we don't see two QBs get hurt by that field and Daniel Jones and Aaron Rodgers. So. When healthy, yeah, they could be second. They look, they, their roster looks really good on paper. And I even mentioned their defense at Hassan Riddick whenever he's ready to, to opt into his contract instead with them. We talk about that later. That's but another poor coaching, poor management. How you how management. you trade for someone and not have a contract solidified? Fitty fleece. 
<laughs> Philly, please. We we're not gonna pay a 30 year old off, off outside linebacker 25 mil. And y'all thought y'all thought the Texas was about to pay that. We ain't finna pay that. We ain't that I, no, I, I knew y'all wasn't gonna do that. <laughs> we, 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 that's so good. when I see that rumor, I text y'all like, bro, Cam, y'all not gonna do that. Please come <laughs> out this, bro. It's coming from a Philly fan. I'm like, I love for Sarah Reddick, bro. I'm not paying no outside linebacker. The last the last offensive outside linebacker got paid that much was Von Miller. Look what happened with, with, with Buffalo. Look how that turned out. I'm not paying nobody that much money when what Philly did, they end up, I'm over here preaching now, they end up turning that into bringing in Bryce Huff, Cedar Garner Johnson, and other players, Devin White. You turn, you going to brought in four players for one dude. With something that you're paying the same amount, all four of them versus one dude. Ain't bringing Saquon too. Yeah, man, that was every time. Man, I don't know about letting us. Bro, I said, bro, I love us already, bro, but he's a system type of player you could fit in. He he could he fits certain systems. So he don't even want to play with the Jets. He ain't show up training camp or nothing. So I don't know, but on on paper though, I got the Jets on, when they're healthy and everything good, they could be second. But in reality, they're probably finish third. And yeah. Okay. So I mean, we can really Throw the Patriots out. They getting dead last. Yeah. There's, there's yeah. no way in hell <laughs> yeah. that they get <laughs> something better than last place in that division, unless like, so, unless Josh Allen gets hurt, the 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 Patriots are finishing fourth. But I was gonna say because I I also think like for all the reasons I said like I think Sal is a bad coach. I can't necessarily just believe that on paper that even though the Jets look good, it's gonna actually perform because they also. They rebolstered the offensive line. They got old ass Tyron Smith. I know he a future Hall of Famer, <laughs> but it's just like he could yeah, very well get injured too. too. Like that's what no, like, I'm telling y'all, bro. No, he's always injured. injured. Oh, I was that's always what, that's what I'm saying. I <laughs> bro, I'm telling y'all, I'm, bro. I'm literally telling y'all, the Jets <laughs> are literally the nursing home team. I'm not exaggerating. And that's what I'm saying. That's that's why up. I can I see them yeah. finishing third. Yeah, but that's why I'm also like. If Miami don't win the damn division this year, bro, this is their year, dude. This is their year. They just this paid is... Tua. I don't want to hear no this more Tua prop propping up Tua. I want to hear it no more. You have all the talent in the world. You got your money. Bills looking like they in a rebuild. The the Jets old as shit. Patriots nowhere to be found. They in the garbage. If you don't win, because they need to win the division so they can get a home playoff game. Because that's yeah, the only way they go win in the playoffs. And they, they fumbled for the past two years, like I said, every year. They're going to start off hot as soon as that weather get cold and the schedule turn up a little bit. Then they're going to go to shit. And that's what they do every time. This year, if they do not capitalize. Because while I think they should win it, they have all the, they have the most talented roster and team, I think, in that division. I still think Josh Allen is going and the Bills are going to be around. Like Even though we think they're in a rebuild, I don't think they just finna lay down and go anywhere. Then, Unless something happens to Josh Allen, the Bills will be in contention for that division. And I, like I said, I'm gonna save the schedule for that the later episode because I haven't looked at it. I don't know when they play Buffalo in Buffalo, but if it's somewhere towards the end of the year, seeding is gonna be on the line during that game. And if Tua loses that one, bro, it's not, I'm I'm done believing in him ever. To and to to make it. To make to piggyback on that, they also finna approach that five year rule too. They like my like I love McDonald. He's like one of the, the the funnest coach I ever watched. Like you know, electrifying young coach. I hate, I hate for it to say, but he's gonna be on that five year rule soon. I think he got like a, I think I think after this year, I think he got one more year with with a tour. Then uh, McDermott should have been past that, but you know I feel like he's this is hot seat year as well. You know with everything going on, this is gonna be for sure his hot seat. Oh, yeah. The reason why I put <clears throat> I put Miami to win the division as well because some of the players Buffalo had let even though they entered like a rebuild year and everything one of the players they let go is with Miami now and Poyer so it's like even though he's older he's still bringing a lot of veteran leadership in that that secondary so uh, and he know he know Buffalo like back he's been in Buffalo like the last five six years so yeah. I wouldn't expect him and Josh Allen to be going like. You know, going at it like head to head, so so yeah. No, I I feel like I mean, I've been said this Buffalo should have got rid of McDermott after this season. Um, I mean, they start people are gonna be like they use it to try to prop up Allen, but Buffalo was actually really bad to start the year, yeah. we're completely out of the playoff picture. 
They ended up making it into the playoffs, but it was had nothing to do with Josh Allen's play for real. They started getting better because they were taking the ball out of his hands more and handing it off to uh to James Cook, Cook, James yeah. Cook. So like that's that's Joe Brady calling those plays. Mm -hmm. McDermott is defense, and every year in the playoffs, what do the Buffalo fans cry about after every time they lose? Oh, the yeah. defense let us down. Is that not what your head coach specializes in? Is that not why y'all always usually have a top 10 or top five defense throughout the regular season that somehow falls off in the playoffs every year? He should have been gone. Honestly, mm -hmm. this year, I'm like, I feel like Buffalo going to mess around and have fools go uh, Brandon Bean, the GM, because it's like, oh, if they do decent, you know, in the rebuild year, oh, we should keep McDermott. It's like, no, you should have been got rid of him. But then it's like, oh, this is a rebuild year. If they kind of do bad, we should still keep McDermott. Like, just get rid of him. Get Josh Allen, the offensive mind, head coach. They, his career will go to waste, and he will be the modern-day Phillip Rivers. All the stats in the world, nothing to show for it in the trophy case because they won't put an offensive coach with him. You've seen, like, <coughs> like what's his name? I'm blanking. Uh, New York's head coach that left them, the OC that went to be the head coach of the Giants. Oh, yeah. Blanking. Oh, oh. I don't know why I'm blanking on ball dude name. He actually, I was uh, gonna say fat ball dude, but he actually is, slipped down oh, this offseason. I, I know I'm mad too because I'm like, I know his name. I right? know his name. This is crazy. Yeah, I need a sports podcast, man. We slacking. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, nah, man. Uh Brian the, the ball Dable. Yeah, Brian. Dable. Yeah, yeah, Brian. You see know. how bad he, he <laughs> looked without Dable the first year he left. And Dable had Daniel Jones looking so good it got him a second contract. <laughs> Which is <laughs> that might handicap the Giants for years to come because that was yeah. that was a bad decision by them and part of the reason they lost Saquon. So like they need to get Josh Allen the offensive head coach, and this is another year they are gonna waste his talent because they're not gonna win the Super Bowl with McDermott yeah. as a head coach, mm -hmm. but he's gonna be there and they'll be a decent team. And, and that's what I'm just like, Miami, you better take advantage of it this year. This is like <laughs> they, this is a golden opportunity for you. And that go back to part when I was saying like a lot of a lot of coaches in the league are like young coaches, offensive minded. If if Buffalo wants to take the next step with uh, you know, the next step as far as like getting Josh Allen elevated and you know them being like a serious contender in AFC, so it's been like a laugh talk the last five, six years, they're gonna have to target Ben Johnson out of Detroit. I was just about to say you go yeah, <laughs> they're gonna he's the only one I can name with besides like because Bobby not going anywhere from Houston. He signed like same like a two or three year deal, so he ain't leaving. They're gonna target Ben Johnson. He said he'll give it one more year and he'll look at head coaching. They better go ahead and throw the bag at him, sell the house, like do an NCAA or something. Like they're gonna they gonna <laughs> they gonna have to get him out of there, bro. They would because look, I mean, Jared Allen, I mean, why I say Jared Allen? Um he's not he's not a bad a bad quarterback for Detroit, but He's, he follows in that criteria of a system quarterback, like how everybody was saying with him and Dak and Brock Purdy. Uh, but look what he's doing with him, like had Pro Bowl numbers. He, Detroit was literally a play away from going to Super Bowl. That the I mean, if you look at over there, and ain't no telling what he could do with Josh Allen over there. And you know, he can limit the interceptions. Josh Allen literally has, if not one of the best arms in the league right now. He just has to take her ball. Machine. Yeah, he's talking. He'd be uh, arm punting. That's what he'd be doing. Yeah, so if you're bringing in an office coordinator who can help you with that, you know, tell him what he can do. So if they're going to look at head coach and change and want to go younger, I ain't going to lie, Ben Johnson probably be the best fit over there. Is he going to do it? Ain't no telling. I mean, Detroit is giving him the bag right now. And he's winning over there. But, I mean, who knows? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I, I think – also, that second stretch of the season kind of helped Josh Allen prepare for this this exact moment. Because mm -hmm. once they started playing how they were playing and winning, they were also using Stephon Diggs less and less, which is part of the reason yeah. he was getting so frustrated. So, I mean, I think they're going to be okay. It's just going to be interesting to see because it's like, obviously, the media loves Josh Allen ever since that divisional game years ago versus my, chi my Chiefs for whatever reason because mm -hmm. he outplayed Mahomes even though – you know, we won. So if it starts looking bad, damn, I got the hiccups. But if it starts looking bad, it's going to get real ugly. But I don't know how this is going to be, though, because, like, I'm nothing, the reason why I was hesitant on saying Ben Johnson is because what are you going to do with Joe Brady? That's two offensive 
gurus, you got on the same team that, that somebody gonna need to run a defense. So like every 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 defensive minded head coach needs a a great offensive coordinator. We don't seen that over the last ten years. Houston has it with with Bobby. Uh, Minnesota had it at one point. Dallas had it at one point. Like a lot of true, even Philly, we got it right now because on paper, Nick Sirianni is supposed to be the, the defensive coach, but he said he ran office. We don't know what's going on down there. But you know, they off, they hired another office coordinator. Every every defensive minded head coach needs a great office coordinator. So, um, with that being said, if they do end up getting Ben Johnson, what are they gonna do with Joe Brady? You know, that's that's two, you know, two offensive minded players right there. Which not saying it won't work, but they're gonna have to hire a special. I mean, not special team. They're gonna have to hire a or promote somebody from like the Alambergs core, the DBs coach, or somebody. Or or hear me out. If they really want to take another step, look into Dallas DB, DB's coach uh, Al Harris to bring in as far as uh, as for like you know some defense coordinator because that's what he wanted. I don't know if Dallas promoted him or not. No, they didn't. They hired Mike Zimmerman as their defense coordinator. Yeah, and um, he on a one year deal essentially. Yeah, Everybody so I mean, because they, 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 I think they're trying to keep Al Harris to be the next one because they're trying to go young. As I was saying, because Mike Zimmerman is in his sixties, so I mean that's like I said, they're not adept to defense. Dallas, they got it worse over there because. Not only they lost half the defense, but they went older with a defense coordinator who cannot adapt to the new scheme of stuff. So I, their defense, I don't know. But um, they can look at Al Harris to bring him over to Buffalo, see how that goes. If they really don't do that route. So what y'all think, like, because obviously, so this is the first time we're going to see Josh Allen without Stephon Diggs since, like, 2019-ish. Mm-hmm. What, what do y'all think constitutes a good season for Josh Allen? Keon that, Coleman. That's that's a well. No, I'm saying like, what stat wise or like how he plays. What do y'all think solidify? Because obviously, people people make the argument that he's QB one, but generally, as of now, since Mahomes has kind of just cemented himself on the throne, yeah. the spot the the quarterback two is up for grabs. Mm-hmm. And you know, obviously, there's a whole section of fans that think that's Burrow. There's a lot that think that's Allen. You got the Raven fans who saying Lamar with his MVPs, but what can Josh Allen do to solidify that number two spot? What do y'all think a season looks like for that? He has to first. He has to throw less picks. Like his turnovers has to be down. Um, he has to put up. Not, I'm not asking him to put up the same numbers, but he pretty much has to put some all pro numbers with a new wide receiver core. I mean. <clears throat> Your wide receiver one right now is looking like to be Keon Coleman, so we got to make him to be like that, that breakout rookie. Not not saying he can have like a Jamar Chase type rookie year or uh, Jay Jett or something like that, but he has to be very, pretty, much, pretty much stand out to where he can be like a a Pro Bowl replacement, not a Pro Bowl nod, but like somebody who can replace you know some players on play the Super Bowl. Uh, he's gonna have to do that because right now my QB my QB two is Lamar, and that QB three. CJ can come for him, and CJ could really be the QB too if how everything plays out with him in Houston with Stephon and the rest. Because in AFC, the Texans literally has one of the best receiving cores, not the best right now. With you know, with Stephon, you got Tank, you got Nico. We're not even mentioning Noah Brown and Schultz and everybody else. So he's gonna have to outplay CJ, in my opinion. Like we are, I feel like Lamar got the QB two cemented uh, right now. But I feel like he's gonna have to play out play CJ because CJ really can get that QB two. It's really up for grabs right there because of his play. We sh- like he he had one of the best, you know, rookie years. And what Houston did was surround him with like hella talent, offensively and defensively. He's gonna have to outplay him. And CJ's young, you know, and he ain't got nothing to lose because he's on a rookie deal. So he ain't playing for a contract right now. So he got he's hungry still. I'm not gonna lie. He gonna have to, he gonna I thought he gonna have to outplay them two QBs I just made to get that QB two. So y'all think what? If, so say let's say the Bills don't make the playoffs, and mm-hmm. Josh Allen has like around forty three hundred yards passing, another like six hundred running, about thirty five to forty combined touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Y'all, is he solidified QB2 at that? Because it's like, okay, he balled out, you know, without Stephon Diggs, even though the team didn't have success. Or does he have to somehow get get playoff success without him? I'm going to say no. 
Oh, you go ahead. Well, I was just I was just gonna add like, are do you think media gonna let him skate? Because I know when we lost Tyreek, it was like all hell broke loose. It's like, oh no, Pat, he gotta do, he gotta win. Because if he can't win, that means Tyreek did it all. And then of course we went on to win a Super Bowl. But Lord forbid we missed the playoffs after that year. They would have been shitting on Patrick for real. Like, oh my God, he really was a Tyreek merchant. He can't just fuck it. Tyreek down there somewhere and throw the ball no more. Look how garbage he is. But you know, media loves to coddle Josh Allen. So I'm like, if if he don't make the playoffs after losing his wide receiver one when before he got his wide receiver one as Stephon Diggs, he looked really bad. And if he reverts anything back to like that 2018 Josh Allen, what's the conversation gonna be? Um, so the reason why I'm gonna say he's still not gonna get it is because if we're gonna go out based off that, that means that Justin Herbert would have been QB two because he had like identical numbers like that, but they wouldn't win anything. So, and he, in the league now, they they look at it as their regular season doesn't mean really really much because uh, like they they count rings, they count accolades as far as postseason wise. But if we're gonna go off that logic, that means. In the AFC, that means uh, Justin Herbert would have been – Justin Herbert and Tua would have been QB2 because Tua led the league last year in passing yards and stuff like that, and people don't even consider him, you know, in the, the top three or four in the AFC compared to CJ, Lamar, and, and others. Uh, so you could say the same thing with that. They, they, they would have put Justin Herbert in that, that conversation solely off of the last couple of years he done had, whether he was hurt, healthy or not. So – I say he has to lead him to the playoffs to get that. Like, if he, I'm, I'm not even going to say he go far because, I mean, obviously with that, the talent and everything having a team, we know so like that it's going to be hard to go far. But see, if he can just get him to pass, pass the wild card, like, I could see him being that top, the top two because of what he's doing without Stefan. Uh, but if we're just solely off the regular season, like I said, you, I just named two, two QBs who had the not, not as close, but like identical numbers like that. They only consider them in the top five in AFC. So nah, he gotta he gotta lead him to the playoffs and at least get a playoff win, but really lead him to the playoffs. What you think, Kim? I think if his I think if his play leads to to wins, I think he'll be okay. <laughs> I, I I think people wouldn't won't say, Oh, he need he needed um Stefan to do this or that. Um now it's gonna be interesting now if his numbers drop, but they still win in games. I wonder how people will like look at that, or yeah. if, or you know, if his let's say his um stats go up and you know they're losing games. Um, I you know, so now that I don't really know how that's gonna work out, whatever. But yeah, I would say I would definitely say if they um well if he if he start winning games without Stefan and then people will look at it like I feel like people will look at it um, a little bit differently or whatever. I you know I was gonna say the he's I don't know what the odds are off the top of my head right now. I'll try to look him up real quick. But if they if he plays good and Buffalo's winning or they're in the playoff picture, he's gonna get MVP. The league yeah, media sure. they've been trying to give him MVP for the last three years and he just hasn't been able to to have a consistently good season all the way through. But now Stephon Diggs going that narrative, he, you know, still puts up the same numbers. Buffalo, they don't, I wouldn't even say they have to win the division. Buffalo makes it into the playoffs and he's got good numbers. They're going to give him the MVP, no doubt. No matter how good CJ plays, no matter how good Patrick Mahomes plays, they're going to give Josh Allen the MVP as long as the Bills make the playoffs and he has a great year. Because then that that they'll feel vindicated off that. And they'll be like, okay, well, you see, if you put talent around him, we, he can win a Super Bowl. And that, that's what the <laughs> narrative will be. So, But on the flip side, the boy Tua did just get paid, man. Was it 251 mil? Yeah. And it's about. I mean – I'm, glad, I'm happy, you know, he stayed healthy l- last year, didn't have the concussion problem, but, you know, that was one of the big things hindering him possibly getting a contract. But now he's got the money, got Tyreek, got Jalen Waddle paid, Odell joined the squad, you still got Mostert, A-Chain, McDaniels calling the plays, he's a wizard, defense. 
They did lose Wilkins, like Swan said, but defense is beefed up a little bit. You still got Jalen Ramsey. I mean, I think the I think I seen yesterday his record when it's under 70 degrees. Not even when it's cold for real. Just under 70 degrees. He's six and thirteen in his <laughs> career. So like it's so important for them to win in the playoffs or in the playoffs this year, but just win the regular season so they have home field advantage. But now that he's gotten paid, what the how far do, do the Dolphins have to go to make it make the contract seem okay going into the offseason? Because I don't think they necessarily have to win the Super Bowl. I just mean, just win a game, just win a game in the playoffs. They haven't won a game in the playoffs since. since win a playoff game? Yeah, they haven't won a they haven't won a playoff game since. They like, haven't been to the playoffs since what? I think like the old Miami Dolphins days. I think that's been the last time they they been to the playoffs or what yeah, because I, I don't know if Ryan Fitz, Ryan Fitz special took him to the playoffs. I don't think I he did. Don't think he did. I, I I think the last time they won a playoff game was was back in it was literally back in it. That's a long time. Is that Dan Marino days? Yeah. <laughs> that's like ninety three and stuff. Oh my god! I don't, I don't know if they made it in two thousands. I know because Fitz it was like one game off from making it. It was. I mean, it was either. She- they definitely wasn't making it when they had Chad Pennington. Yeah. Wasn't making it when they had Matt Moore. And they didn't make it with Ryan. T- no, they no, I think they made it with Ryan Tannehill once. I think once. Maybe. I think once but I think they got smacked. Yeah. I, yeah, I yeah. think I think it was I think the stat I seen the last time they won a playoff game was was that long ago. It was, it was a long time ago. <clears throat> I, I yeah, as far as winning was, wise, but I think they made it with Ryan Tannehill. They they okay, so they did before this last year making it. The year before that, they made it. No, that was. Hmm. Yeah, they made it. Right I was gonna say here. last. Okay, they made it. Okay. Well, I was yeah, gonna say right in 2023 they made it, but Tua was hurt, and so they had yeah. to play uh, Skylar Thompson. I think it was. Yeah, the last time they made the playoffs before the whole Tua thing was when it was the 2016 season. Uh, they lost to the Steelers in a, in a wild card. They barely had made it though, but Tannehill had 19 touchdowns and, th- and 12 interceptions. But yeah, they lost. They lost. The, so the 2016 season, last time they made the playoffs before Tua came around, and they haven't won a playoff game since. Yeah, so they they, they went like they went five years no playoffs until Tua came like five, December, almost four or five years. December 30th, 2000. That's the last time they won a playoff. I was just game. looking at the, yeah, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> that's 24 years, bro. I was, I was gonna say that too. Like, I was gonna say obviously like the bare minimum is to win a playoff game, but I was really realistically, I was gonna say like they can make it to the AFC championship. But I mean that's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say so like yeah. I, I kind of agree with Cam where it's like just win one playoff game, but at the same time, man. You give him that that much money, you got you give him first. money, but that's all Dawkins fans are asking. Like they just want to win a playoff. Yeah, oh no, we, we, we got we got a we got a homie like that. We know. They just want to win a playoff. I got a hold. He just was. He just want to make the playoffs and just win a. Play. That's all. He like, that's all he asking for. I feel, feel like them make ball. them win the playoff game will help Mike McDaniel's hot seat go down for sure. For sure. I mean, that's all he need. I mean, I don't think he got a hot seat. It's just tough now because you. No, did when, when good, I say a hot bro. seat, I'm saying like he's approaching that five year span window, so like, it'll help cool it down a little bit because he, he approaching. Got he got this year three. This year three. He got time. Yeah, that's what I'm I, I agree though. It's still approaching, yeah. Because their history, I'll I'll be okay. Like you just like him said, just win one. Just yeah. But with the talent on their team and the opportunity they have this year, they really need to go get first place in the AFC or at least second, win yeah. that division, and then really you're gonna get two home playoff games at that point. If not, if one, if you get first and you just lose in the divisional straight up after the bye, but you'll get a wild card at home and a divisional game at home if you get second seed. I feel like with that talent, I'm not saying Tyreek finna fall off, but I mean his new deal didn't add any new years. It just gave him more money. Yeah, so he's he yeah. still only got like another two, three years. He's in his prime. You got. I feel like, like as a Dolphins fan, I get it. Win one playoff game. As a football fan, and the fact that I'm looking at you just gave two a 251 mil, and he ain't done shit yet. Like playoff wise, you gotta do more. You gotta make the AFC title game at least. Like, yeah, if you yeah. can make it to that game, and then like, okay, like, say the Chiefs are there, and you lose to the Chiefs, it's like, okay, 
everybody's lost to the Chiefs there, so we can't fault you for that. But like, yeah. if you if you get to the playoffs and you lose to someone like like a Cleveland, or you lose, I'm not saying it is bad, like in a sense where Houston's bad, but like you lose to Houston, that means like the teams have now jumped you. Like Houston was bad. They got CJ. They got playoff experience last year. If they come into the playoffs and beat you, it's like, damn, CJ younger, hasn't been paid yet. We just paid Tua. How did they jump us? And, you know, we got all this talent too. Like if the Bills mess around and, like, they got to play the Bills, even though they might win the, the – Dolphins might win the division. And the Bills mess around and beat you. It's like, when is it going to be time? So they they got to win one for sure. But really? If we talking about it and we keeping it a buck, just talking straight football, they yeah. probably got to really make the AFC Championship game because you you got all the talent in the world now. If, as long as you're healthy, there's really no excuse. So That's how I look at it. But like I said, you got all that talent, pay them all that money. And like I said in the last episode, it's a lot of QBs that are getting paid hella money and hasn't done anything. Like, like Jordan Love had that crazy second half, got paid. Trevor Lawrence hasn't done that thing. He only had one playoff win. It was also some fluke still because Brandon Staley is not really a good coach. He got paid. Um, Joe Burrow, that one Super Bowl run, got paid. Jalen Hurts, I'm an Eagles fan, but one Super Bowl run, he got paid. So a lot of QBs are getting paid and have really haven't done anything. Tua has not won the playoff game. He's like 0-3, 0-4. He got paid. So Trevor Lawrence got paid. That that probably one of the worst ones, him getting paid, in my opinion. I'm not even trying to sound like a hater, but he – no, I am going to sound like a hater. I am hating. He should have got paid. He, he shouldn't have not got paid. I don't know what they say. He should have not got paid. I'm going to stand on that, bro. He shouldn't have not got paid. Is, I was watching Speak the other day. And like they was talking about, it was last week actually when the contracts got signed because Jordan Love got his too. Yeah. And while I mean we all clearly Jordan Love fans, we think he's gonna be great, but at the same time, you know, he he did only have the second half of the season where he was good. So yeah. can you bank on that? I don't know, but they banked on it. They gave him two hundred fifty mil. But right. Lashawn McCoy was basically saying like, like yeah, it's always next man up. You love you to see players get their money. But if I'm another position group, I'm like, damn, can y'all pay me? Like, IU want to get paid, deserves it, but he's not a quarterback, so they're not paying him. And it's like all these quarterbacks that have not done anything, getting buku money, yeah. and you got another, Dak Prescott. I, while I'm not finna sit up here and say, like, he going to lead Dallas to the Super Bowl, he still deserves to get paid because he's done more than these other quarterbacks. Like, these guys are getting paid, breaking the market, resetting the market, and it's like, okay, do something, please, because it don't get any easier from here on out now that you got your money because now the team can put less around you. So, Tua, mm-hmm. you still got all your weapons. You got your money. As long as you stay concussion-free, you better produce because if you don't, it's going to get real ugly. Exactly. Because then it's like, I mean, I don't want to say two is on the hot seat, but I mean, shoot. You start you start asking around about possible trades, like, hey, would you be interested in two as y'all's quarterback? And what can we get in return? Cause like, what else, what more can what more can you possibly put around him to help him at this point? You try to do a trade. I don't even know what team can offer that. I don't know who either, but I'm saying because Miami will yeah. be stuck with them since they gave them the contract. The only way you get rid of them is to trade them, because unless you you have to do like Denver, where you cut and all of it becomes dead cap in a couple years. But That's a lot of dead cap. That, that would be stupid as hell. Yeah, so yeah, not still, doing that. They're still playing players they release. They still got play Xavier Howard and other players. That's, that's a lot. That's what I'm saying. Like two of man, it's now or never for real, and like. So I'm like, I'm excited for this football season, man. Because there's a lot of it's a lot of people that gotta prove something. And it's the spots are up for grabs. The only thing that is solidified is that Patrick Mahomes is number one. And I'm gonna throw y'all a curveball because we done talking about the AFC East, man. <laughs> top the top 10 of the NFL top 100 got released last Friday, man. Mm-hmm. What y'all think about it? Because there's I'm, I'm going to listen to, you know, I've heard, I've read some of the excuses for why, man, but 
I'm I'm going to let y'all speak on it, and then I'm going to come in with my retorts. There's no uh-huh. way in hell Patrick Mahomes is four, bro. <laughs> no. No, and, I feel like... and there's no way he's the second best quarterback in the league, bro. There's no way. There's I feel like no a, way. I feel like it was a, a very BS list. I'm not going to lie. I feel like Mahomes really should have been one just solely because, like, I can tell you from my experience, I I knew y'all was going to, like, you know, go for it. I didn't think the season y'all had with the receiving and, you know, the off the field stuff, the Chris Jones situation, to come back and – Beat not only win the Super Bowl, beat beat that team again in the last five years. You beat them twice in five years. <clears throat> that alone should got him the number one, in my opinion. I feel like number two though should have been McCaffrey. I'm sorry, the year he had, he literally carried San Fran. He had from the the receiving yards, the rushing yards, t- total touchdown, total purpose yards, screaming everything. I feel like he should have been number two. I'm I, obviously they gave it to Lamar because of the MVP and stuff. But even when Lamar won the MVP, I kept saying for the longest, if you're gonna give the MVP to somebody who's another QB, it should have been Dak. If you're gonna give the MVP to somebody who's a non-QB, it should have been McCaffrey. That's how I feel because I feel like Tyreek had a great year. He had almost had 2K yards uh, receiving. McCaffrey had over 2,000 yards, total yards, scrimmage and rushing. It haven't been done since uh since Chris Johnson, honestly. And then Dak literally led the league in the QBR total touchdowns, and I think he was top two in passing yards behind Tua. Lamar had 19 touchdowns total. I'm not putting it as my MVP. I know people are going to crucify me, whatever. I don't care. He had a he had a he had an okay year. Like it wasn't nothing spectacular to get MVP. This kind of reminds me of when the Aaron Rodgers and the JJ Watt situation, when both of them had like you know, on the media, a great year, but a lot of people feel like JJ should got over over Aaron Rodgers, but Aaron Rodgers had this crazy run, QB, whatever, same thing to Lamar, but it's an all QB award. But I feel like McCaffrey should have got it. So I feel like McCaffrey should have been second, but Mahomes should definitely been first because of just the year he had. Nobody expected the Chiefs to go that far to win it all. I mean, I'm never going to doubt Pat Mahomes, you know what I'm saying? But Nobody really, really listened. Everybody thought it was going to be Josh Allen year because of the year that the Chiefs were starting off with. They thought Josh Allen going to finally do his thing. They they thought that the San Fran would finally get their revenge from 2019, 2020, whatever. None of that happened. Everybody riding Brock Perry's tail about, you know, him being better than Jimmy G. He's going to take him to the Super Bowl. But he did the same result Jimmy G did, not win. So, no, I, I, should, I feel like my home should have been, been one, in my opinion. And I feel like McCaffrey should have been two. If I'm gonna put three, I'm gonna put Tyreek Hill at three. Then you can say Lamar. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I mean, you're not gonna like it for Chiefs fans. I mean, it was <clears throat> it was pretty fair. I mean, I like okay, obviously we know that Pat, like Pat, he's the best player <clears throat> in the NFL. But I think this list was kind of based of on what they did last year. And if you're being honest. Pat had a pretty under like what we seen from Pat. That that's his standards. Where where he was last year, it was like way way down here. Like we're not we're not you know that's not that's not the Pat we know. So I mean yeah, like you know looking like stats wise, it was very underwhelming <laughs> of what Pat did um, this past year. Um, I don't think he this this past year. I don't think he's better than Tyreek. Tyreek nearly broke a lot of records. Uh, Lamar was the MVP. C- I don't, he was not better than CMC. I mean, I, I I personally liked him at four. I think four was was very very fair. Now, like I said, I know y'all not. I know you know you Chiefs fans not don't like it or whatever. But I mean, yeah. I mean, if it's just going based off of like regular season stats, I mean that's I, I think it's fair. You know, to put him at four, me personally. I actually, it's not that I don't like it. I actually love it because it. <laughs> it I mean, it, it, it's got to be really hard to have motivation after winning back-to-back Super Bowls and you trying to go for a three-peat. But the fact is not only that they put him at four, we only had three players on the top one. I don't know how on God's green earth Sneed or McDuffie did not make it onto the list. Sneed, just for being locked down all year, McDuffie was all pro. Somehow, some way, did not make the list. Creed Humphrey, who I think is now the best center in football since Jason Kelsey retired, he didn't make the list. 
So you're telling us, you know, back to back Super Bowl champs, only three players on the team in the top 100. That's one. This is where I get your argument. And this is what I've been reading. And I, I get it. So apparently they, because this is the players vote on this. So that's the other mm-hmm. thing where it's like, well, the players said it. They vote apparently around like week 11 or week 12, I think. So they're like, well, it would have been how you feel currently at the time. And at the time of week 11, week 12, the Chiefs, we were on our downward spiral. We were not looking good. But here's where I argue against it, one. If it's about how the season truly goes, and I'm, I have two points for the, or two argument statements for this one point. How in the fucking hell did Aaron Rodgers make the list of the top 100? Oh, and, yeah. and that's no the clue. argument people are going to go with. It's like, oh, well, it's a, on the season. The dude played four plays. I, I, I just think some awesome. of the Chiefs snubs, but there's so many other players that could have taken that 96 spot. Why did they have to give it to Aaron Rodgers? That's why I said let's be it's made over Jalen Johnson, bro. Jalen Johnson That's what I'm saying. There's so many another. more deserving players all based off of last year that could have taken that spot. So that's argument one. Two, they're like, okay, well, yeah, for Mahomes standards, he had a down year. That's why he got four. Except Patrick Mahomes, when he got in the league in 2018 <laughs> and got MVP, 50 touchdowns, 5,000 yards. What position was he in the NFL top 100 after that year? Uh, no clue. He was four. <laughs> Who was so one? I think was Brady. Brady and Breeze was two. <laughs> and I think Donald, I mean, yeah, Aaron Donald was uh, three. And so it's like, okay, y'all say it's based on the year. It's based on the stats. Dog, he, he was literally the best quarterback in the league from the jump. Didn't get one. Then fast forward to the next year. Lamar had his MVP season. Lamar got unanimous MVP. And I get it. He had a great season, but it was really because, oh, he was rushing and throwing. But it's like unanimous. So then they put him at one because he's the MVP. It's like, well, damn, Mahomes just threw 55,000 a year before he's MVP. He got four. Then they put they put him at, I, what, I think the next year he got one. And then after that, he, they put him all the way at eight. Then he wins the Super Bowl last year. He gets one again. So all I'm saying is this is my second point. While, yes, it's based on last season and the stats, even though the Chiefs were playing bad, and we know that was mainly because our wide receivers were just complete shit last year, (coughs) at any point in the season last year with Mahomes, the reigning MVP, reigning Super Bowl MVP, if you ask anybody who's the best player in the NFL, what is their answer going to be? I gonna see my homes. So that's why I'm like, okay, man. If we gonna give you know Rogers his respect, put him on a list after playing four plays. If you gonna not give it to Mahomes, you know when he did have amazing seasons because he gotta earn it. What else do we gotta do? He 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 was he was returning off a Super Bowl win after he lost the number one player, and y'all said, oh, the Chiefs are gonna go to shit because they lost Tyreek. Well, Tyreek is apparently the number one player in the league. He lost him, had one of his best seasons, if not best quarterback season in NFL history because he broke the all-purpose yards record, won MVP, and then won Super Bowl MVP on top of that. That's what he was coming off of. So at any point, if you took it week 11, week 10, week 9, I don't care what week, who's the best player in the NFL? Patrick Mahomes. And everybody knows it because even the clip the NFL dropped, like hyping this thing, was the clip where they were interviewing Jamar Chase and they were like, "Who's number one?" And Jamar Chase was like, "I'm not gonna say his name." Yep, I ha- I'm hating. He's great. He's amazing. I'm not gonna say his name. Best quarterback, I'll say Joe Burrow, but he deserves his props. I'm not gonna say his name for number one. He not he not talking about no damn Tyreek Hill. He talking about Patrick Mahomes. So I know the players vote. But sometimes I feel like whoever making the executive decision, because they only vote, they just write in their top 20 players. So I don't know how the math works out to where you get 100 down. But the players only write in 20 names, who they think are the 20 best players in the league. Whoever oversees it and puts it all together, I feel like they just need to do some, some corrective tweaking where it belongs. Like, hey, we probably shouldn't have Aaron Rodgers at 96, where he tore his Achilles four plays in the year. Hey. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes might not be looking the best right now compared to his standards, but he's very clearly still the best player in the league. 
we should put him at the very least two. He's not worse than Lamar. Like, because, like Cam just said, what? He really, like, we gave him the MVP, but it's really because the Ravens were the best team. It's not like Lamar had an MVP season for real. He played good. Nothing was, like, truly amazing. So that's why I'm like, come on now, man. If it's about respect, it's Mahomes. It's about, it's about stats, still Mahomes. Like, he's the number one player. But even if you're not going to give him number one, the disrespect for me comes in where you said he's the second best quarterback in the league. Well, we all know that is definitely not the case. And then on top of that, I know, like we said, it, it happens week 11, you know, so it's not – they don't know what's going to happen in the playoffs. Mahomes literally beat all top three players in front of him. Tyreek, Lamar, McCaffrey, one by one, Super Bowl champ, Super Bowl MVP. So now it's like, dog, whatever year we have this year, dog, just put him at number one, bro. Just put him at – we could not win the Super Bowl this year. Just put him at number one next year. He deserves it. Like, it just is what it is. He He's coming to the league and dominated from the start. So, like, that's what I'm like. I don't – the whole list was just stupid this year. I don't – I hate now that they're also doing the thing. Like, it used to be fun because it'd be like once football season is coming back up, they would start having the episodes, like, every, like, Thursday or Friday. And it would be like they go in increments of 10 and they play it all. Now it's like – Oh, you gotta have NFL Plus. I have NFL Plus, but it's no longer like a whole show with all the, the uh ten players. They're each their own little three minute videos, and I'm like, this is stupid as hell. Like y'all ruined something that was really good, and then on top of that, the list was terrible this year. So that's my only gripe with it. I I get the argument, you know, that it was you know, based on the season, and Tyreek did almost have two K. But come on, man, Lamar over him. What are we doing here? What are we doing? So it is what it is, man. But appreciate y'all if y'all listen all the way through. This was our AFC East preview combined with a little top 10 NFL talk because, you know, we we just get back into talking about football for real. If y'all haven't, I'll link it in the description. Go check out the live we did last Thursday where we talked about the AFC South and talked about a whole lot of other things, the quarterback contracts and stuff like that. Um, next week, we're going to be doing the AFC West with the Chiefs, the NFC West. We got to do all the NFC. We'll be doing the NFC West, AFC West next week to start off, and then we'll knock out the remaining three NFC divisions next week after that. And then we got the, the season preview episode where we're going to give our actual predictions. We're waiting for preseason to start. Obviously, you hate to see it. You don't want it to happen, but injuries will happen. It's football. It's a major sport. I think I seen like uh, Mosley on the Lions tore his ACL <laughs> camp yesterday. So you hate to see that. Some of these players are going to get hurt in preseason. So yeah. things will start to kind of file out. And then, you know, we'll drop that episode week or Thursday morning of, you know, the NFL header Ravens at Chiefs with our season predictions and everything, man. But excited to get back into it. Bet's going to be coming back out. We got some special stuff planned. It's going to be a whole new layout this year on how we're doing things. We got a set schedule. I think y'all going to fuck with it for real if y'all rock with the I Need a Sports Pod. But, you know, just to give y'all a little hint, preview, you know what I'm saying? Can't say too much, but just know we got some special stuff in store this year. Can't wait for y'all to keep tuning in all year long. It's going to be a great NFL season. Boys are going to be locked in. Hopefully we get our dog Chris back on. He's been tied up with work heavy down at OKC, so that's why we haven't had him on the last couple episodes. But he will be back. We will make him talk about his Cowboys, <laughs> even though even though he has no belief in them whatsoever. But yeah, man, it's your favorite kids from the neighborhood signing off. Swan, Ken Sanders, myself, Bryce. Peace.